Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lesson, we are continuing our study of chapter five on thermodynamic processes and cycles. And we are beginning to look at heat engines and in particular, the Rankine cycle. So we discussed in the last video that the basic Rankine cycle is a series of equipment uh, essentially a turbine followed by a condenser, then a pump, then a boiler. The turbine's job is to produce heat. The condenser returns this material to a low pressure or to a liquid form at a low pressure. And then we have a pump that's going to return the pressure to our elevated pressure we need for the inlet to our turbine. And then we'll use a boiler so that we can convert this material from liquid to steam. Now, the reason that we are doing the whole converting phases back and forth seems inefficient. However, that means that my pump does not require as much work input, and so therefore it maximizes the amount of energy that I can produce overall from the cycle. When we begin doing the analysis, we want to always begin any set of problems that we do that are thermodynamically based. We want to look at a material balance, we want to look at the first law of thermodynamics, and we want to look at the second law of thermodynamics. So let's talk now about this steam power plant. The entire process is closed, right, because I put material in there and it just keeps cycling around. However, each piece of equipment is, has flow going through it. So we're gonna model these as steady flow devices. In that case, the mass balance says that the mass flow in is going to equal the mass flow out on any device that I have in this system. The first law analysis for any piece of equipment in this system says that the heat transfer plus shaft work will equal the sum of the total energy coming out minus that coming in. Now total energy in this case will be enthalpy, right? It's a flowing system, enthalpy, plus the kinetic energy and the potential energy. And my second law, again, no accumulation, so the flow of entropy, so m dot s out minus m dot s in, will equal the heat transfer divided by the temperature it occurs at plus the entropy generation for my entire system. Again, entropy generation is going to either be zero for an ideal reversible process, and it's going to be positive for any real process. When I use this analysis on my basic Rankine cycle, First of all, the flow in is always equal to the flow out, and there's only one stream in and out of each of these devices. So therefore, I can divide everything by mass and work with things on a per unit mass basis, make my life a little easier. Typically, we are going to assume that for the turbine, Q is equal to zero. We're using a subscript one, two to indicate that this is the process from state one to state two or our turbine with the numbering that we've adopted here. The shaft work for our turbine is gonna be W subscript one, two, and it is H2 minus H1. So the final enthalpy minus the inlet enthalpy. Now this assumes no change in kinetic or potential energy. We are not going to be able to use the shortcut equation that work is the negative well, it's, it is the negative integral of V dP, but V is not constant for a vapor. So therefore, you cannot say work is negative V delta P. Okay, this would be a very serious mistake in this case. So be sure you're using H2 minus H1 for this calculation. In our condenser, there's no work, right? No moving parts in a condenser. We are just taking heat out of the material through some sort of uh, heat exchanger, essentially. So the heat 
taken out of the material is going to, from the point of view of the material in our cycle, is going to be the enthalpy at the inlet to the pump minus the enthalpy at the exit from the turbine. So H3 minus H2 is our Q23 or our Q for our condenser. And this is going to be heat loss. Okay, so it will be negative Q. For our pump, I'm going to again assume that this is adiabatic. The shaft work here is W34, can be calculated using the first law as H4 minus H3. But if this is nearly reversible, liquids have very nearly constant volume. So I can approximate this as volume times the delta P, P4 minus P3, okay? I can use that because it is a liquid and nearly constant volume. For our boiler, it's kind of the similar analysis as a condenser, but we are adding heat into the system, so I should have a positive Q. It's H for the exit is one, H for the inlet is four, so Q for the boiler is H1 minus H4, and there will be no work because there are no moving parts. In our next video lesson, we're going to look at an example solving a basic Rankine problem. Thank you very much for your time.